Hello and welcome to Cretaceous Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Mattel Jurassic World STEM Tyrannosaurus Rex Anatomy Kit. Just picked this up off of Amazon for $39.99 and it is here. Um, it wasn't one of the things I was most looking forward to out of this line, but it's another T-Rex and it's one that we can take apart and look at inside. So kind of figured what the heck that sounds kind of fun so uh, the packaging here as you can see is quite similar to pretty much the general line look for the jurassic world toy line from mattel and uh, it's got a blue backdrop you can see the item on there quite nicely it says that it is easy to assemble and it shows you some of the parts uh, in that picture there in the center we have the same image of owen and blue on the lower left and the jurassic world logo up on the upper left At the very back of the box, excuse me, you're in my way. At the very back of the box, we can see another image of the T-Rex fully assembled. Looks pretty seamless in the picture, but once we get it unboxed and taken apart, we'll see how true that really is. A pretty nice exploded view on the left side, showing you all the parts that are involved here. Uh, it says pumping heart and lungs, interesting. Uh, chomping jaw. And uh, it shows you a picture on the lower left of one of the other STEM items. Uh, it's a skeleton for a different dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really of interest to see here on the bottom. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time. Get this out of the box. and we come back, we'll take a closer look at the T-Rex anatomy kit. All right, so once you get this out of the packaging, you can see that we have a menagerie of parts that are meant to be assembled and put this gal together ooh chicken leg tasty there's a manual here or instructions rather that uh, tell you a little bit about the parts basically just says that you need to assemble it as shown uh, detach the parts in this fashion and assemble them by plugging the pieces into the holes and um, it's very involved as you can see there's a lot here so here's the t-rex here uh, as she comes out of the packaging. So basically we have one skeleton arm, one regular arm, and then we have uh, a missing leg and all of our insides right here, as you can see. Um, so this muscle is very soft. I'm just going to pull it like that. Um, very rubbery. Hopefully this doesn't become very sticky and deteriorate over time. Uh, in here we have the uh, skeleton. So let's just continue pulling it apart and see what happens. So like right here we have the arm it just goes into that socket now we have her skeleton arm <laughs> right here and uh, this is very interesting uh, let me show you the detail real quick on the head the head looks nice you can close the jaw uh, basically looks like any other t-rex that we've gotten out of uh, mattel's jurassic world toy line you got the scars on this side so this is definitely a post jurassic world rexy Eyes looking good, uh, teeth look pretty nice. Um, overall sculpt of the animal is um, basically what we've seen before. I really do like this jaw. I like how there's no tongue. I like how it just stays open if you open it. Um, no gimmicky action features, although it kind of seems like maybe there is something built in there. Cause you can see how like the jaw kind of opens up like that or it closes. So it seems like there's something, some sort of mechanism built in there. I like that though, very simple and you can have it open or you can have it closed. Works for me. So we also get the DNA activator is what it's called. And it basically works as a little key. Uh, if you look at the very top of the dinosaur, you'll see that there are these two notches. And this is kind of cool. So once you put it in like this and you rotate it, you can actually see Rexy's lungs filling up with air. That's pretty cool. Nice little detail there. Um, but we want to remove the rib cage, so we need to stick our activator in there, position it just right, and um, from there we can rem remove her ribs if we get it. There we go, just like that. And uh, here's a better look at her lungs moving in and out. Now, as far as I can tell, these other parts uh, do not come out. All of this is permanently in there. You can see the screws right there. So I, I guess if you really wanted to, you could get a screwdriver and take all that out. But all of this is um, permanently affixed within the dinosaur. So let's go ahead and take our muscle right here. And uh, we'll go ahead and notch that 
back in. We'll just line it up with these little notches, like so. And uh, down here at the bottom, let's see if we can get that in there. So as you can see, the rubber is very, uh, very bouncy. And uh, it, it doesn't cooperate as easily as you might expect. So you kind of got to work with it a little bit. All right. So now that that's in there, we can grab the other part of our tail. And this is actually kind of cool. You can see the bones in there. I like that. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in back here. You'll see that there is a socket right there and you have a bulb right there. You just push it in like that. And now we can continue plugging in the muscle. Now let's take the chicken leg and place it in there. So you can see that uh, the bone does have joints built into it like that. It looks like they kind of can't really be posed, but it looks like maybe there's a little bit of a pressure uh, sort of thing going on here. So let's see what, what this does. If we plug in the leg right here until we hear it snap in place. Let's see what it does. Let's grab that DNA activator and see what happens. Ah, so you can see that the leg actually moves. All right, so now we don't need an exposed leg, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that back off, just like this. And I'm going to take a look here at this muscle. It looks like this muscle does come off, so if you wanted to pull that off of the leg so you could analyze the bone more closely, you could do that, and it looks pretty nice. But we're going to go ahead and stick this back in because we need the muscle. Muscle is very important in order to be able to move, so let's get that back in place. Now we're going to go ahead and take the leg. You can see that it is uh, in two pieces right here. It's in two halves. So if you split it apart like that. All right, so first things first with regards to this chicken leg, we want to take the cover for her foot, which uh, as you can see is her skin and her claws, and we want to place it over the bone. Now you will see that uh, you kind of got to line it up, but you also need to press on it so that it kind of locks in place around the bone. Once you have that on there, then you can grab half of the leg right here, the skin, and uh, just kind of put it in place. Then we grab the other half of the leg right here. We'll cover it up and just press until you hear, you hear it snap. As you can see, the bottom is going to continue to be exposed because there's no cover for that. I do want to show you how there is a ball joint, so you can turn it quite a bit. But when you do that, it kind of makes the muscle um, come disconnected. But um, yeah, pretty cool. I'm having a lot of problems getting this piece right here to plug into that bulb right there. Like it's just really not wanting to cooperate. Uh, it's just really hard to access it because it's not really centered. So I. I just can't get it to stay in place. You kind of see how it's like really up close to the bone, so there's not really a way to get this to go around it. So we'll just do our best. All right, next thing we want to do is grab the cover for the tail right here. And we are going to slide that in place. So you kind of got to look at the spots in which it is meant to just kind of notch in there. Uh, so back here at the tail, kind of slide it in, and then you just press until it basically locks into place. So I'm having a really difficult time with this. Um, it's like once you plug in this top half, like this bottom half has a tendency to kind of come undone. And once you start squeezing that, it starts wanting to disconnect it from the top. Uh, but the biggest issue seems to be right here in the tail uh, down here where you can see that bone is. Uh, and I think that's because I wasn't able to get that piece of the muscle plugged in. Uh, it's just kind of, it 
just kind of there um, because we weren't able to get it around the little built-in bulb that's there. So this is proving to be extraordinarily uh, difficult, at least uh, in terms of this one piece. Everything else seems to have gone together quite fine so far, uh, but this is kind of difficult. And then you also have that split right there uh, where you have that joint, which makes it even more difficult. So this seems to be about the best I can do. There's still a little gap there. And I know it's because that muscle is just not flush all the way uh, because there's uh, an inadequacy with the way that it fits. So uh, we'll just make it work as best we can. So we're gonna continue on to that rib cage portion that we picked off earlier. And we'll go ahead and slide it back in. So to get it back in, uh, basically you just slide it in. So easy peasy. And then we're gonna take the top part of the uh, torso and just kind of plug that in like this. And this goes in relatively easily. You just kind of kind of line it up until you hear it snap in place all the way around. Next thing we're gonna do is take the tail that we assembled earlier and we are going to line up those two um, notches with the inside. And we are just going to press until we get it in. Now, we're still missing a part. We're missing the arm. So we have our little forelimb right here. <laughs> it's so funny looking. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take half of the skin right there, and we're just gonna kind of get it in place, just like that. And then we'll take the other half and just lay it over until we get it plugged in. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and grab our dinosaur and we'll place the finishing touch in there. And there you go. And you can see here that the fully assembled Rexy stands just fine. Her feet actually are not flush. Uh, you still have those seam lines. It's really hard to get it 100% flush. Like I said, once you get one piece snapped in, it kind of affects some of the other coverings on there. So you do have that little gap that does show through. If you flip her around, all of that goes away and she looks perfect. Wait, what? Nope, of course not, because you still have that hole right there. So the reason that you have a hole right there is because you're supposed to take the uh, DNA manipulator key part, uh, stick it in there, and she does this. Franken-Rexy. Um, and then when you look at it from the top, of course, you still got those holes, and this is what I mean. It's really hard to get it all flush. Um, if one piece is just off a little bit, it affects something else. Uh, in this case, I still couldn't get the tail to, you know, be flush all the way because the muscle isn't situating inside completely the way that it should be. As far as the rest of the articulation is concerned, you can, in fact, move her forelimbs. Uh, they swivel up and down. The legs, uh, at least the one here on the left, can uh, be ratcheted in place uh, however you want it. Uh, the left one, however, is a little bit more... Uh, difficult because of course you you assemble it so you have all these pieces that are there so you can't really move it anywhere <laughs> it's just kind of going to re you, if you pull it back if you push it forward it's just kind of going to go back to being situated right there uh, from the bottom of course you have the foot exposed there's no covering for that uh, no Jurassic Park facts app um, sticker there uh, you do get that little T-Rex though right there you can also rotate her left ankle same as pretty much uh, any of the other Mattel uh, JP Rexes. Now I know a lot of you are curious about the size of the figure. So if we look at the height, Rexy stands at about eight and a quarter inches tall. And then for her overall length, she is 18 inches long. As far as how she scales up with the human figures, here's our three and three quarter inch scale Owen. Uh, you can see that Rexy's a little bit on the small side. All right, so as I was taking the dimensions for the Anatomy T-Rex, I realized that they are pretty much the same as the Extreme Chompin T-Rex here on the left side, uh, available in the US exclusively through Target. So she isn't as big as the Thrash and Throw, and she's obviously a lot smaller than the Super Colossal T-Rex. In fact, they share the same exact left leg. You'll also see that the forelimbs on the Anatomy T-Rex are kind of chunky looking since the dinosaur has come apart. And when you consider that the Extreme Chompin and T-Rex is $20, uh, half the price of the anatomy T-Rex, that kind of makes it a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, you can take it apart, 
yeah you can see all the organs and the innards uh it's cool for a science type toy but it's kind of a pain to get all the parts to connect uh, as you guys saw it was just kind of difficult to get everything to fit together especially the tail because the muscle doesn't line up properly with the inside of the tail and then of course you have that hole in the side of its head and you have the two holes in the top to help activate those features um so it, i can't really recommend it if you just want a t-rex uh that's going to function as part of your display or your shelf uh, but if you're a kid who likes taking their toys apart uh, or just having, you know, an extra amount of fun that you can't quite accomplish with some of these other Rexes, then you're probably going to like it. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If so, do give us a like, do subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to the Cantina Chatter Podcast on iTunes. If you're so inclined, we do have a Patreon page. There's a link to that down below. And as always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Cretaceous Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.